Today we are going to discuss the low level design of a food ordering app. Something like your Zomato, Swiggy, Doodash, you must have used this app for ordering food. And this is a very common question in HD1, 2 or even senior software engineer interviews. Now this is going to be a very specific video and we will concentrate only on preparing for a low level design interview scenario. We are going to implement only the core features and the specific functionalities which you need to, which will be asked from you or which will be expected from you in a face to face or a machine coding low level design interview. Uh, it's not a broad scope, it's not a general learning of low level design of a restaurant food ordering system, which can be a very large system. It's completely concentrated on the uh, how will you approach this question in a low level design interview. So let's get ahead. First of all, we will see what the requirements are or what the core features are. Then we are going to break our solution in multiple classes. And we will also see how using observer design pattern, we can build a more extensible solution where loose coupling is there. And finally, we are going to build our final Java code and run it on this code gym editor. So let's go ahead. Whenever you use a food ordering app, you do these things. First of all, you browse a list of restaurants which can be sorted on different parameters. Here we are talking only about the top rated restaurants. Also, what you do sometimes is you search for a particular food items and you see in which restaurants those food that food item is rated the highest. Again, what you do is you order food from a particular restaurant. And if you are truly happy or unhappy with your food, then you rate the order. 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 where 5 is the best rating and 1 is the worst rating in case you are quite unhappy about the food from that restaurant. Now, there can be tons of other features that a food ordering app can have. There can be a payment, payment functionality. There can be a delivery tracking functionality. But the thing is, if you keep listing out everything, there are going to be tons of classes and there are going to be tons of features. These are very large systems and they take months to build using or sometimes years to build using hundreds of engineers. So nobody is expecting you to write down or break down everything, all the components in all and all the classes. Especially since you know that the interview duration is for a face to face interview, it's 45 minutes. And for a machine coding interview where you actually have to write code, it's 75 to 90 minutes. So what you need to do is you need to basically calm down and a better approach to approach this question in a low level design interview would be to figure out which features your interviewer wants to discuss. And for these questions, these three are the core features that your interviewer would be willing to discuss. And then what you do is you deep dive into these features and discuss their implementation. In any low level design interview, it is important to know which topics or which features you want to focus on. It is more important to know which topics or which features you should be avoiding. That is what a low level design interview is all about. So let's start designing this system. Let's start with the easy thing. What we are going to do is we are going to list down the entity classes first. The first one will be our order class. It makes sense since this is a food ordering system. So what we do is we order a particular food item for a given restaurant. And later what we do is we may or may not assign a rating to it from 1 to 5. Apart from the order class, we also need a cumulative rating class. So we'll have this rating class which will keep track of all the ratings and the number of people who rated. So basically what we need to do is we need to keep the track of overall average rating for a restaurant and overall average rating for a particular food item inside a restaurant. So our average rating will be basically sum by count and we will round it down to one decimal point. This is how it works. Let's move ahead. Since we have an entity class order, so it makes sense to have a order manager class. So what this class will do is it will basically store all the orders in a hash map and it will take care of two core features in our system. The first one is order food, where a new order will be generated and it will be stored in the map. Again, there is the rate order function, where it will simply get the existing order from the map and set its rating. Now, if you remember, there were total four methods. Two we have covered. Again, we have the method get top rated restaurants. So what we did was we created a new class 
where a get restaurants method will return the top restaurants what this class does is it stores the rating for all the restaurants basically the cumulative rating for all the restaurants in a map and in the get restaurants method what we do is we basically brute force or go through all the restaurants inside this map and build a top n list uh, and return it so it is less efficient we could have maintained a tree set in our system uh, but the thing is uh, basically in any low level de design question it's less about how clever algorithms you use or how efficient data structures you use and it's more about how you arrange your code so that it is extensible more and more so even this hash map is uh, enough for any low level design interview but you can suggest the interviewer that uh, you could have used a tree set or kept a tree set a here also and maintained it so that you can return it directly inside the get restaurants method basically it reset with a top end restaurants anytime again for the final method that is get top restaurants by food uh, we will have the functionality implemented by this class most rated restaurants by food and here we use a two level map so basically the first level is the food item id and inside the for each food item id we have got a map of uh, all the restaurants which sell that food along with the rating for that food item inside that restaurants so again if we want to get restaurant or get top restaurants for a particular food item we'll fetch the inner map and then we'll simply brute force and build a top end restaurants list using the rating similar algorithm like we use in the most rated restaurants class again here also we could have used a more efficient data structure but uh, you know since the thing is in any low level design interview your time is low and lot of preference is not given to how efficient your algorithm is so better start with a simple data structure or algorithm and later if you have got time then just give a better one or move move on with it interview will understand solution class is our main class or the driver or the controller class as you can say and basically it will call the methods from the classes that we created orders manager most rated restaurants and most rated restaurants by food to implement the functionalities what is it doing is it is simply calling the methods from the existing classes that we just saw so this is how your starting class will look like just take a look at it you can pause the video if you want and let's move move ahead as we saw our orders are getting stored in the orders manager class and also rating of the orders or rate order is being called inside the orders manager class only and we have got the top restaurant listing classes most rated restaurants which has got its own internal map uh, which keeps track of all the restaurants and their ratings cumulative ratings and we have got another class which list top restaurants by food this class also has a map internal map basically a two level map which tracks the rating of restaurants for each particular food item the main question which you have in your mind at this point of time is how will the internal maps of these two classes will know that a particular order has been rated inside orders manager here because these classes need that information so that they can update their internal maps this is where observer design patterns come in so what we are going to do is we'll make the class orders manager our subject and make both these listing classes as observers and we are going to add all the observers inside orders manager and whenever an, any order gets a rating from a customer it will simply notify all the observers this is what we are going to do first of all we create an interface rate order observer and we have an update method inside it so any class which wants to listen to order updates whether an order has got a new rating or not it will simply implement this interface our both of our classes most rated restaurant by food will implement this interface and this most rated restaurant will also implement this interface and hence the update method so what that basically update method will do is it will take out the correct rating for that uh, restaurant for that particular food item and add the new rating to it and basically this cumulative rating object will be updated similarly in the class most rated restaurants also we take out the uh, rating object against that restaurant id and add the new rating to it 
This is a simple code or you can pause the video and read it. Our class orders manager will be the subject. And if you have read theory about the observer design pattern, then you should know that what a subject does is it keeps a list of observers and it notifies them all uh, whenever update or change in data occurs. So it has got an add observer methods using which new observers can be added to it. It doesn't need to know anything about those observers apart from the thing that they have got an update method. That's all it wants to know. And so has got a notify all method which basically calls the update method inside each of the observers. So whenever the rate order is called, you can see that notify all is called and all the observers are notified about the new order update. And the class solution, it initializes all the subject and the observer and it adds both the list or the restaurant listing classes as an observer to the orders manager class. Now we could have done it without using the observer design pattern. But then we would have to call both the these classes or the update method or any method inside both these classes from inside this orders manager. And in real life, what we want to do is we want to separate the class where data change is happening from the classes which are basically depending on that data. So those will be the view classes, the listing classes, the analytics classes, the notification classes. There can be tons of those classes multiple classes and we want to separate both these. What we do not want is whenever a new observer class like uh, basically a say rating and analytics manager gets added, then we do not want to update it or we do not want orders manager to know a lot about it. And we do not want to basically uh, update our orders manager code whenever a new uh, observer or such a class gets added. So we want loose coupling and observer design pattern provides us with that. Also, as you can just see, it makes it easy to add new observers. All we have to do is we have to add an observer during initialization and it, gets, it keeps receiving all the updates. That is how all this works. Now that we have completed our code, uh, it's time to test it on the code gym environment. So let's copy this whole code and come back to the editor and paste it here. One thing which you should remember is at the bottom of the code, uh, this is the helper code which you need to comment else you will get the compiler error. So let's comment this code and now we all of our code is here which we discussed just now. Let's run it. So running means you are running the sample test cases and when you submit that means you are basically testing for all the test cases so right now it is running now it is compiling the source code and there was only one test case and it has passed successfully so what we are going to do is we are going to submit uh, the thing is uh, when your code runs against all the test cases and passes all the test cases successfully then you get the confidence that okay i did this right now so i can do it in, a, in the interview right now our code has compiled and the tests are running so six out of 12 tests are passed now wait so as the more and more test cases pass uh, this number here will keep changing uh, only one test case remains and now all of our test cases are passed so we know that the solution which we provided was indeed correct and um, this is this will give us the confidence that we require for the interview and so this was the solution this was all about the low level design of a food delivery basically a food ordering system the core features the design pattern and what's not now uh, you may be having you are maybe basically preparing for a low level design interview or you may be uh, basically have a, already a scheduled LLD interview upcoming in the upcoming week or this week. So what we have done is we have created a seven day plan to prepare for your low level design interview. It contains all the videos and it will answer all your common question about the patterns, what you should 
read the basically the questions that you should practice first and the common design patterns which you should practice and you can access it on codegym.com slash roadmap so give it a try it will help you prepare for your interviews very efficiently and thanks for watching this video uh, i wish you the best of luck for your interviews bye